Okay, so I got a table base here going on, and I did not do a video for this project because I did a table like this already that was similar. I did the shelf a little bit differently on this one. I did this extra trim piece, but this is the trim that I put, you know, to cover the edge of the plywood. It goes on like that. But I will be demonstrating another method in this table. I just got this job here. And this is a larger version of the same table here with two big drawers. And I'm going to do a beefier shelf out of solid wood this time. And I'm adding some trim, trim work underneath the countertop. So this is going to be a dark green color, reclaimed wood countertop, two big drawers, paint finish, and I'll be starting this project in a few weeks. But in this video I'm going to do a quick tip that will be very helpful if you want to work with pine because there are a lot of advantages to constructing paint grade furniture with pine. There are a lot of shortcuts with the construction techniques using this soft and versatile material. Um, but there is that bleed through problem and how to deal with the knots. It doesn't work with every kind of finish. And some customers are really picky about that kind of stuff. So you got to be careful. In this case, this table is for a new designer, for a customer that I have no idea if they're going to be picky or not. So I have no way of assessing it. I'm not doing a distressed paint finish on it, so I think it's supposed to look kind of clean. So a knot bleed through could potentially be a problem. If it's a rustic piece, the bleed through can add to the character. And most of the time, if you're doing that kind of finish, uh, it's not going to really be distracting. But some customers are really picky and it's hard to tell. I've done a couple jobs that I've had to refinish because of not bleed through. So I've really had to come up with a solution that's almost foolproof to get rid of the knots so I don't have to take that kind of risk. I can't be like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just put the bins on it and hope for the best because that might be in a very visible location. They might get upset about it. You have no way of knowing. So I use pine because it's cheaper, because you can build it a lot of different ways. It's great for stapling, brad nailing, and gluing, and sanding as well. That's like the big winner. It's easy to sand. It's soft. doesn't take nearly as much time as other types of wood, hardwood, poplar. It's just so much faster. So pine has a lot of advantages, and that one big disadvantage, which are these unruly knots. So you don't, want, you don't want your knots hanging out when you're doing a job, if you know what I mean. So you got to find a way to tighten up those knots. And I'm going to do a video right now showing how to do this. It's not that hard. It's just one extra step but it's almost foolproof to guarantee that you won't have a bleed through in any kind of time frame that you can get call back for. So pull up your bootstraps. So this table is going to have a zinc countertop and I have it over here. I'm using my sand buckets for weight so I can weight this thing down. I'm just ready now to take this out. Okay, so here are a couple of different products that you can use for stain blocking. And when I do this, I just spot prime over the knot so I don't cover the whole thing with this primer. I'll just take a little detail brush and just get the spots that have the resin. So this one is water-based. This one is shellac-based. 
which cleans up with denatured alcohol. And for stain blocking, this one sucks. It's really not going to do what you want to do with knots. I use it as a base coat for certain types of finishes, and as you can see, I tint it. Not all hardware stores will allow you to tint it because you have to take some product out. I get these at the local store in town and they'll allow it there. Um, but it does help to have it tinted to get it close to the color that you're going to end up with. This is a better product for stain blocking and I've been told that pure shellac is the best product to use and that comes in like an amber color. I like to get the pigment tint so this shellac base primer is the better product to use but it's still not going to do a hundred percent I mean this will just slow it down and that's something that you really got to understand that the resin that's in these knots is virtually unstoppable and using a good quality shellac based primer will slow it down but it's not going to stop it and it's still going to come through because you only have a thin layer of paint on there and it's just a matter of time the resin dissolves into the finish and just bleeds through so there's only one way to deal with this to be 100 percent foolproof and that is to actually physically remove this top layer around the knot and you'll notice that there's a discoloration around the knot and these areas here are full of sap so it's not just the knot that bleeds through these streaks that run kind of horizontal with the grain they also contain a very high resin content but not all knots are prone to bleeding some of them like this one it's pretty dark the dark ones are from branches that have died a long time ago and the sap has already been sucked out of them and they're not as problematic but any knot in pine that has that red color has the sap in it and it will come through what I have here is a real juicer of a knot and the wood is just totally packed full of resin you can feel it it's sticky clogs up the sandpaper and I would never paint over this I would cut this off right here and just discard that because there's no way <laughs> there's no product in the world that can block that kind of resin bleed through now there is another option for paint grade material pine is not the only softwood that you can paint on and I have here a piece of hemlock and if you can find this material it typically costs half as much as pine in terms of softwoods hemlock is not the choice material for building furniture it's prone to checking it has a tendency to crack you get a little checks in it like that and it can be really unruly material and it's harder than pine but it does have some good characteristics uh, besides the fact that it's cheap uh, the knots on hemlock don't bleed through nearly as much as pine and you don't get the resin streaks that you have in pine and the surface actually finishes up pretty nice it, it's more grainy pine has more of like a uniform even surface texture and the early wood and late wood and the hemlock is much more of a contrast so when you paint over it you can still see the grain which kind of has a unique characteristic I like painting on hemlock it's actually a pretty 
decent material for paint but the cracking can be an issue and it's generally not quite as stable as pine but it is harder it has a little bit more durability but I just want to show you an example as a, you know, an alternative you don't always have to use pine for your paint grade construction I use a lot of fur which is uh, two by framing material fur and spruce hemlock those are all used framing and I can get that at you know Home Depots and hardware stores and this material is local I got that from Goodwood okay so over here we have some products that I use for filling gaps and surface imperfections for large gaps like knots that are missing I'll use body filler and you can get this at auto parts stores it's a two-part mixture it cleans up with paint thinner so it can make quite a mess but if you have a missing knot or something really large this is the way to go and it seems like in the past couple years they've come out with a lot of new products for wood fillers and I've tried a couple here and they work really great this one it says stainable and I don't really know exactly what it is they're talking about but it contains a kind of aggregate so you can make larger fills with it this one is all dried up but you know it has a mixture of sawdust or something with it and didn't shrink as much as the uh, old style filler so I found myself using this in a lot of cases where I would normally use the body filler and since this cleans up with water and it sands easy it definitely saves time if you can use a good wood filler they have these over here these are new products and they have some kind of color changing thing going on so it'll dry white which tells you when it's ready to sand and this is a good product too it has a more even texture but it doesn't shrink as much so I've been using this stuff uh, and this is just the same a different color and these products work great so I'm going to use this product today to do my repair work so here's a test block and I'm just going to show how I remove the layer using this mortising bit on a trim router so I just freehand it and you'll notice you know there's the knot part here but then you get these streaks you know that go around here like this so I'm going to try to get this this whole area right here you know so I can I can fill all this in What that does is it helps take out a little bit more of the resin and it also gives these spaces that I'll smush the uh, filler in there and that helps integrate it with the knot and the surface so that it, you know if it does crack it's not going to just flake off so these holes kind of just pin it into the wood and you get a little bit of mechanical strength with the uh, filler Alright, so as you can see there, I ran out of room with the trim router. So I gotta get my chisel out. 
I gotta do that by hand. So I got this here doll chisel. It's all nicked up, abused. I got glue all over it. And uh, I'm not gonna take the time to sharpen this tool. I mean, really. I just gotta get this job done. I wanna get paid. I wanna get paid for this job. The wood's defective. It's got imperfections. Who would ever make a piece of furniture with knots? It's terrible. But this is what we got, folks. Okay? I got pine, I got dull chisels, and I got jobs to get done. Yeah, this is not for light duty work here. There we go. Sometimes pine has these streaks of resin that run with the grain. And these can bleed through just as bad as the knots. So, sometimes I like to work those a little bit with the scraper. Just take the corner of the scraper and just gouge it. So this fill right here is pretty thick. I might have to go over it one more time. If it cracks, I'm going to let it dry overnight. I'm going to do my zinc top now. Alright, the filler is good and dry at this point. I didn't get every little detail. Like, there's still some like hairline resin streaks in there. So what I'm going to do is just hit these areas with the primer. Hope for the best. And if I was really worried about it, like if this is going to be white, you know, I'd, I'd be worried about this stuff. And if it was white, I'd probably go with the hemlock, which I showed you before. I don't know what I did with that. Or I would go with poplar uh, as the fail-safe, no bleed-through materials. Um, for this, I'd probably do poplar because the hemlock can be, you know, kind of unpredictable with the cracks. And just for visual reference, this is that piece of hemlock again. And this is what poplar looks like. And the knots on poplar don't have any bleed through, but they you can see that they tend to chip out pretty easily. Sometimes poplar can be really dark. This is a really dark piece of it. It's almost as dense as cherry, but the sapwood is is never that dense. So these are both good paint grade materials. Poplar is about double the cost of pine, and hemlock is half the cost of pine. If you just want to get a general price reference.
Okay, so I'm ready to put on the next coat here, and I'm going to use this product, which is the water-based primer, as the base coat. And the product that I started with here is the alcohol base primer, which is the best product to use for the stain blocking. So all the little streaks, I went over it with this tiny little brush and it might look ridiculous to you know cover all the surface with a tiny brush but it it really controls the mess and it's hard to clean out of the brushes and it usually ruins them so I I just find it easier to use a smaller brush for doing the spot priming and then you know if you use a big brush with this stuff it splashes everywhere it's just uh, counterproductive but sometimes the pine is pretty clean, like this piece down here didn't have any streaks, so I didn't touch it, but this piece here was all full of streaks, so I pretty much had to cover the whole thing. So if this was a distress paint finish, I'd be starting with the base color that would be visible in between the crackle but since it's just a straight color I'm just gonna go with a water-based primer mainly because this product is cheap it's cheaper than paint and it's easy to sand and that's one of the properties of primer that make it practical to use because all of these knots and areas that I filled in they're gonna be slightly visible on the surface and I'm going to add more layers of primer and then sand it in between coats to build up the surface. So I'll be showing that technique and it's just basically the same technique as doing bodywork or drywall. You do the finish detail and the final smoothing by adding layers of primer and then sanding the primer. But just to note using the shellac primer to cover the whole piece of furniture I would consider it overkill and I only use it as a spot primer when I absolutely have to and it's a better choice to use a water-based primer if you're doing a water-based paint finish because you get better adhesion I've had paint separation before with the shellac primer because it's kind of smooth and the paint doesn't stick to it quite as well. But if you want the best stain blocking properties, this is the best product. So, and plus the toxicity factor. I mean, this, this is water-based and this stuff will make you dizzy in about 30 minutes. The fumes that come off of that are pretty strong. So, it really isn't desirable to work with. Okay, so I'm going to do another experiment. This is the test piece, and I'm going to use the body filler to do this repair, and then I'm going to sand it and prime it, and then I'll compare it with the result that I got with this wood filler on the table. So I want to work it into those holes first, and then Kind of just feather it out.
Okay, so the primer is dry. I'm getting ready to sand it. And I just want to make some comments. And I want to show the areas that I did my repair work and the spot priming. So you can kind of see it, but it's not real visible. And these parts where I gouged out with the chisel, you really can't even see it. And here is the uh, test piece that I did with the body filler. So you can kind of compare and contrast how the body filler behaves. So you can see that the, the surface of the fill is smooth and there's an indentation there. And that's because the wood soaks up the primer differently and the body filler behaves more like a plastic. And so you got two levels there, and to work with that, I would have to add more layers of primer, sanding it in between coats to build it up. And so it makes more work and doesn't look as good. But I just want to show that just to illustrate how good the new wood fillers react with the finish. And it almost behaves just like the wood, so it swells up just a little bit and it makes the surface preparation a lot easier and it looks better. So I'm going to sand it with a sanding sponge. I have a couple different sizes, coarse grit. For problem areas I use a sanding block or a scraper. So I'm just going to do a quick once over, a couple swipes. It doesn't take that much work. It's just to knock off the rough stuff and all these areas of raised rough grain. Sometimes there's these little barnacles that puff up. And so I'll just hit that real quick and then I'll do some more spot priming. There's a couple knots over here that look slightly indented. So I'll just hit that a little bit with some more primer. It doesn't look that bad. And overall the base coat here turned out pretty well. Okay, I got my first coat of paint on, and I just wanted to show you how bad it looks. <laughs> I used the wrong tint for the primer coat. It was way too light, and I didn't check to see what color green this was. I didn't think it would be this dark, but just wanted to show you what happens here. I've got all kinds of streaks, and I should have used a darker tint for the primer. Or, I could just use this color as the base coat because technically this paint is self priming and does not require an additional product for a primer but like I said primers are cheap easier to sand and it's really no big deal here 
I probably will get away with just doing one more coat if I do a good job and it'll be okay. So here's another quick tip for you. I didn't clean the roller. I wrapped it up in plastic wrap and a plastic bag. And then I put it in the fridge. And that'll last for a few days. The paint won't set up in the cold temperature. Good to go. All right, my table is complete, and I just want to show what the finish looks like in these areas I did my repair work. So there's that knot that I chewed out with the chisel and then filled. And it doesn't really stand out as a surface defect. And in fact, I can see this indentation here that was left over from the sanding block. So I got some cross grain scratches in there and that left more of an indentation than my actual repair work so got to be careful with that so just to summarize what I have here on my finish I started with the shellac base primer to do the spot priming on the knots and the resin streaks and then I did a water base primer as a base coat then I sanded that and then did touch up primer on all the problem areas to even out the surface. And then I did two coats of paint and then a coat of varnish, which in this case was an almost flat polyurethane. I did a video about how to make your own flat varnish, so if that would be useful to you, check it out. And if this was a different color, like white or a color that would be changed by the yellowing of the polyurethane, I use a water-based varnish, which does not yellow. But on darker colors, the oil varnishes look better, they're easier to work with um, as far as brushing it on. So here's that test piece that I did the body filler, and as you can see it 
definitely leaves more pronounced indentation if I don't do any more primer to it. So over here are those other knots and you can barely see an indentation there. I wouldn't call that a defect. But it's a paint finish, it's put on with a brush, and there's no way to make it look perfect. And even if you can do it perfect, there are these uh, little areas of the wood that puff out. That's from the wood getting dinged up when it's getting handled. They swell up with the, with the paint. So here's my paint finish. I hope it was useful. It might save your job to know how to deal with these knots if you want to work with pine. Because sometimes they can really be a problem.